Good night, sweetheart. It's cheating. Going to bed is cheating, I say. The packet says so. Searchable as reptiles. So I have a, a question. My my dive deep in the shallow end is not necessarily like a traditional one. It was just more a question for snake industry stuff. Does that count? Is that good enough? Uh, a question it's like for it's snake like here's a thought. Stuff. Yeah, here's a thought. Well, about no, you never you never tell me to dive idea? deeps before they happen. We just they just happen. Right. You know, I don't I don't ever get to I don't get the pre knowledge of. Well, I can tell you if you want, but I was gonna save it. But basically, I like I was like, why don't we do this in the snake industry? Is that a good idea? Hmm. Is that Good enough for a deep dive deep, or should I think of something more random? I don't know. Um, I'm open to either or. Okay, then we'll roll with it. That's what I have. Yeah, it's uh, it went pretty hard. Like even for being sober, you know what I mean. Like just like how hard it went last night. I guess like even though it was, it was still late. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. You you were here, and I was like, <laughs> I, yeah. I got everyone invited, situated. It was like, peace, <laughs> good night. Yeah. The, the only difference between that and what I normally do, though, is I usually just sleep in front of everybody instead of going to a room. Door. Yeah. <laughs> the only other time I went into a room was when we were up at Barchek's place. Remember, I got that Airbnb, you, me, Bradley, and uh, yeah. Rob. Mm-hmm. And I, I hung with you guys for a little bit, but yeah. I'm I'm always like, night night time. Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> night night time. Garrett. <laughs> yeah, even if I fall asleep in front of everyone, like when I did in your snake room or any other time, really happens all the time. This room is strange, <laughs> just a little bit. It feels like an attic at Grandma's house. Yeah, it's a little like. I think it's that corner door. There's like a door that's like clipped. The wall is clipped to a corner for some reason. Yeah, it's, cer- it's certainly interesting. And these gold picture frames, they're just never a good idea, but I always see them in Chicago. My parents have had a picture hanging above their living room couch that has that kind of gold frame. It's not as shiny as that thing, but it yeah, it's been it probably was at one point. <laughs> yeah, I shot it with a BB 80s. gun once to get everybody out of the house. It reminds but, me of Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> Weird, <laughs> is it though? Yeah, because I don't, I can't pull the reference of Wonder Woman 1984. Well, coming off the first Tinley weekend in a long time, almost two years. The last one was crazy. We drove up and they canceled it like yeah. hours before. Yeah, I mean we've talked about that plenty of times, but like yeah, I mean I was coming from Australia to a night they voted to make a national emergency. I had a caravan of how many cars? I had like a big box truck and at least three other cars, maybe four. Yeah, so, your burden was a, a bit heavier. Huge crew, <laughs> and I had bought literally fifteen thousand dollars worth of swag to to because I was like launching the new logo. That's how long it's been. The the little snake logo that I have on my shirt still seems fresh to me. You know, the last Tinley was the first time I ever had that logo. the The new logo seems fresh to you. It does. Okay. I mean, it just does. I don't know. It's not a bad thing at all. Maybe I see it every day, all the time. So yeah, like you probably see it more than I do. Familiarized I'd with it. <clears throat> Oh, how about that U.S. Arc rebrand? That looks fresh. Same too. guy that did it. That yeah. Did mine. That looks fresh. And Kabilka's. He did the Canova thing. I wanted to make it to his booth the whole weekend. I walked by once and glanced at it, but I wanted to go see his stuff and you know, maybe buy a shirt or something, but didn't. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, everybody needs to do that. I think it's very undervalued. Zach's the one that got it right. Zach Nava. He he went to he he went to Blake. At Stuart Design as well, same guy. I mean, it's cool to have someone that's that professional, who's also like understands the reptile industry. Do your rebrand, but Zach was like, "No, I don't have a name. I don't even have a snake business. I don't have anything. Take it, run with it." So they came up with a name and everything. So he did it right, but 
That was pretty cool. They unveiled the new... Well, I'm wearing the shirt. I just put it on. Because I was in my sweaty other shirt from breaking everything down. This one doesn't have the colors or anything. It's kind of like yeah. stealth logo, but... The color <laughs> one is is definitely where it's at. It, I agree. Com- it communicates everything that you... Yeah, this is about. missing a lot. Yeah. But, yeah, but they unrolled the big banner and it sold for $10,000. Thank you, auction. Todd Goodman. <laughs> Yeah, that was crazy. But I think that's what the industry needed. It was it was pretty cool because I'm friends with Blake. And so I knew about the rebrand before US Arc did because <laughs> he's like, US Arc. Yeah, I did too because you've told me about it. He's like, you know, there's a yeah. few companies that really could use the rebrand in the yep. industry. That yep. are huge, yeah. When he got in. US Arc was definitely one of them. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'd seen it the whole time and it's but it's pretty cool. It came to fruition, and, yeah, and everybody came, loved it. Yeah, I saw it came a such million a great shirts. Yeah, it was fantastic. People it, it, walking around. It's much more clear. And Phil, Phil said that, like a few days before, he was in a line, a line of Teller Bank or something. And the person was looking at the old logo on his shirt and was like, "What does that say?" <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Just yeah. confirmation. Yeah. Well, you know, I always, I always said that the old logo, like it's cool, but I was like, it looks like graffiti or something, like the font and everything, and it's very messy yeah. it, it kind of looks like graffiti it, it's definitely like graffiti and i was like you're coming up with a logo that has that graffiti vibe to try in front and of congress legislation yeah <laughs> it's like, yeah. come on yeah you know, guys. that's true and that's what so. that's why i think it's very successful it's very clear and then the thing that i thought was like a very smooth kind of stroke of genius is just taking that familiar phrase fight for your rights and just adding an s to fight fights for your rights like yeah. it's just it's so it's such a smooth transition into what it is that will the, the people that you really want to get on your side like and drive that message home that 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 slogan right at the bottom there fights for your rights is uh hmm. it, Th- there's it a lot there's a lot more i'm actually excited to see how they roll it out on the website and stuff over time because like i i did the there's a whole branding experience that steward design will will take you through if you want to pay for it <clears throat> but um they they do a lot of the messaging and stuff like that so like you know kind of like the about us and the intro and they they really do like a deep dive with sure. it and stuff so yeah i looked at some of the packages of like the- i didn't get to see any of that on uh, um uh, of what he did with us arc so i'm interested to see because yeah. there's some deep stuff there you know well it just it went over well i thought like maybe also because I'm also personally invested in, in Blake. I like Blake. I think he's a cool person. You sure, know, I like, like talking Blake. with him. So when I see him up there talking, I'm like, yeah, go go Blake. You know, do your thing and explain what what you did. And he like did in a good way. It wasn't like super clean. This way, he fumbled over his words a little bit a couple times. You know, just reading from the paper, but it was still good. Like the message he was trying to get across and what he was trying to explain, he kept even even when it seemed like he would almost stumble on. It was like he just picked it right up and was like kept it going with wow. the message. And then the big win was definitely like how let it outbid any other item at the auction by double oh yeah easily yeah no it was cool i think he i you know i mean he's not a trained public speaker or anything no but i think but it the was reason good. why he was fumbling was because he really had it it was very important to him it yeah. was on his heart what sure. he was trying to say yeah, about no, why he did the rebrand and and it's got to be nerve-wracking you know, because it's like the rebrands are funny. Like even when we did ours, it's like oh, I like the it's old. It's the same one. resistance to change. It's always that resistance <clears throat> to change. Right. People, people are like, no, we like it. Like a whole that. room of people that, and you're the guy who did it. Yes. So they, oh, yeah, 100%. they have absolutely the opportunity to be like, oh, you're responsible for this. I hate it. Let me tell you about it. Right. And it, and it's an entire reptile industry. You know, mm-hmm. like in one room, basically. You know. So, yeah, that's got to be nerve-wracking. Like I said, I thought you did really well. Yeah, he did. So, our good friend James. Who, he's the only person that I have to apologize for Uh-oh. the fact that I'm doing Sober October. Nobody else <laughs> deserves a slight apology from me for that. You know, if they wanted to like have a drink with me this weekend. James, <laughs> we had made a plan beforehand that he would kind of curate a whiskey tasting while we were out here at Tinley. Yeah, he's and then into it. I decided, after we had decided that, that I was going to not drink for the month of October. Yeah. And he showed up with all these whiskeys, and he gave me some really cool bottles. He gave us these right here, these ironclad Ars Hot Southern Honey Cask. I'm super interested in it. 
Well, I'll tell you what's cool. So James Green is kind of like we were talking about. He's like my, my setup crew <laughs> for unofficially for the last years because he just pitied me in the beginning because of this big booth that I would do run and everything by myself. Kimberly was the same way. You asked me who my first employee was. I was like, well, technically it's Kim because she would come to the shows and she's like, eh, I just I look at the snakes real quick. I say hi to everyone and I'm done, but I'm there all weekend. So I'll help you with your booth if you want. I was like, great. I'll buy you like dinner in a hotel room and stuff like that, you know, while you do it. She's like, perfect. That's what I want. So anyway, um, he comes every time and he comes early so he can set up. And this was kind of cool. He knew you were doing the dry month, so he bought two bottles. So I can drink this one tonight. And I could take this one home and, and enjoy it next month. Smell it. Yep. And then you can do it at home. So cheers. Cheers, Thanks, James. Yeah, thank you, James. Uh, I don't know how to open this, though. Uh, it's, there's a wax pole right here. You see yeah. that little thing sticking yeah, out? Yeah. You just gotta, yeah, you gotta be kind of somewhat yeah. aggressive with it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Teeth it, tooth it, bite it, grind it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There okay, you go. I got it up. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Sometimes that's hard for me now. I'm getting older. <laughs> I like the wax sealed bottles. It makes me feel like it's got a good seal on it. <laughs> you know? It was pretty sealed. It hurts my teeth. <laughs> I'm definitely interested to see what it smells like. Let's see. See what it smells like. Taste how it sounds. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. The, you know, the interesting thing, I, I don't really have... There was a moment last night when we were sitting at the thing where I was like... I was just curious. Or not, not that I was curious. There was, oh, when, after the auction was done. And we were sitting there. And I had a couple of those bottles, that, like one that James had given me to take back and the one I had won at the US Arc auction. And there was a moment when we were standing there and I was like... Those bottles are asking me to open them right at this particular moment. That was it. No, no other moment yet. Like it's, I'm a third of the way through the month, and I just wanted to do it for myself, just to you know reset the palate for one thing, and then also just, just little, another little lesson in self control. You know, a little because I've got 150 so bottles in the house that are almost that are mostly open. Yeah, it's not you're, like you're I'm, uh, you're doing the whole month of October. Is that the deal? Yeah. Okay. It's just that thing that rhymes with these people who do this sober October things. And, right. And uh, I was like, well, why not? Just go for it. And I've done a cleanse before, and I'm doing a cleanse in this as well, like the, the Perium thing that Hillary does with all the green shakes and stuff. Like, yeah. after I get back, I'll do 10 days of that and then ease back in with more of that and some light. And it just resets the palate. I remember the last time I did that, like, and came back to taking a couple of sips of some of the whiskey, do the notes I was pulling out. Some of these whiskeys that I had before was just like, whoa. It tastes this better. and that and this. Yeah, it's just the palate was cleansed like in a deep level, not just in like I drank some drank some water real quick level. But the smell when she's making an interesting face over there. <laughs> strong. Well, it, it once the 95 proof, it's not strong alcohol percentage wise. The, the smell it. It made my eyes almost water. Well, you are, it, it is a big glass, a big open glass like that. It makes a difference versus like one of those ones that kind of tapers up like a Glen Cairn. Yeah. So that's the difference. Just like, whoo, airing out. Yeah. No, yeah, I think it was just, you just got an initial ethanol hit because of the big open glass. It's yeah. not hitting me as... That's all it was. Yeah, it's pretty mellow. Oh. <clears throat> it seems good. Though. I don't know if it's technically a flavored whiskey or if it's just that it got finished in a honey cask. Like, I guess this is he said the they... chili infused honey barrels. Yeah, he said that they, they put honey in the oak barrels and they let it soak in for a really long time. And then empty the honey out. So yep. it's just like got the essence yeah. of honey inside the barrel. Gotcha. So, I'll let you know that in makes a minute. Sense. It smells good. It does smell good. Yeah, it doesn't smell like I know you don't like the flavory yeah, stuff. Yeah, this one seems like it would be fine. A little, just that hint of honey, at least on the nose. Well, this was a... Um, you know, like we've done other Tinley podcasts. There was even one where I'd gotten roofied and stuff at the Tinley show and stuff like this. But um, I never really like party super hard or anything like that. But I definitely do more than I did this time. This was my most mellow one. And I also didn't have any life threatening diseases. Oh, yeah. Weird, right? Yeah. That's kinda different. Broke the uh, thing. There. I was waiting for something. It was almost like, <laughs> you know, oh, what was superstitious. It? What was it that broke in the back of the trailer? We don't know. Oh, you don't know? It was just something back there. You it, didn't it was find something it. like, yeah, we were driving a, in the box truck and there's like 
there's a little fiberglass door right behind your head because there's like two seats there and there's a little door right there. And so it's like a drum, you know what I mean? And something was just, when we would turn the truck a certain way, I think it was probably just the hook off of a, you know, tie down strap or something was going boom and hitting it. But, every, you know, it hit once and Thomas almost like ducked and was afraid. He thought he was getting shot at. And uh, it, I mean, it, to be fair, it was loud and it sounded like someone shooting, but it sounded like someone standing in the cab with us shooting, mm, okay. <laughs> not, not like getting shot from far away. Crazy. But yeah, and then it, and then uh, I heard nothing from the outside. I was following you guys, but from behind, I heard nothing, but I was, you know, in another car. So yeah, this was just like six inches behind our head, right. something going poof, 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 on the other side of the door. So mm. it did it twice more. He thought he was getting shot at too. He's like, oh, it's just, I know it's not, but it keeps well, freaking Well, to be fair, out. somebody else said they were coming in Chicago and like they, they were riding an Uber to the show and the, they had to stop somewhere because some guy had gotten shot off of his motorcycle. So shot off his motorcycle, like he was on a motorcycle to light, and somebody like shot him dead. I guess. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. So, yeah, it's funny when I lived in L.A., we heard about that stuff all the time. When we first moved to Pittsburgh. We'd turn on the local news. My wife's like, "Why is there so many house fires? It seems like someone's house is always burning." And I was like. I don't think they have anything else to report. <laughs> like an old lady set her house on fire while she was cooking. Yeah, I remember, yeah, definitely gunshots and big things going off in LA when I was growing up. You know, I lived there when I was six. Seldom then... did you hear about it on the news, though. You no, would yeah. hear it in the streets. Yeah. But it was normal. It's like, yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh, yeah, that's good. Dude, I, I talked, I had some of the best conversations at this Tin Leaf than I've had. At maybe any other reptile show to date, like per capita, like the amount of like really good connecting, feeling conversations that I have with people, mostly very good. Um, the one not so great, but still very deep connection. Uh, just it seemed like with everybody I was talking with, I had a bunch of people come on Triple B that I've wanted to have for a long time that I've been talking with doing it for like for what seems years. Oh, like, you did a lot of interviews too. Yeah, that too. Uh, on yeah. top of the, just the conversations that weren't recorded on, on the thing. I mean, mm. Todd Goodman, I've been talking to him about doing it forever. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. And he, he was fantastic. Um, John Lehman that created Morph Market. I love that guy. Yeah. And we had talked about it a while. For, like, we were like, oh, are you going to be at the show? Are you going to be at the show? I want to sit down with you and like rap about it. And that was really good too, um, but just like like I said, almost every single person that I sat and talked with for any amount of time, even if it was short, even if it was like thirty seconds, or if it was like twenty five minutes, it was just like this real connecting. Like it felt like I was just vibing with everybody. Do you think it's because it's been two years of the show and we usually see each other at least? I was just in Anaheim two weeks before. Yeah, but and it was these huge. people. Todd Goodman was at that show. Um, Right. I mean, I'm not. I also had. I, I think there's something about it though, because I was at Schaumburg, and that was a couple months ago. And that was even here in this area. Yeah. So but my you go back is, to Tinley. There's a. You know, it, it's maybe it's the place or the. There is something, and I. There's I, a familiarity. I try. The only thing that I've been able to nail it down to, you know, on a very shallow level, almost or physical material level, is that carpet. The carpet in the the in carpet the in the freaking center. venue. It's like so <laughs> soft and like you can run on it. It feels nice. You know, we've broken like... it down with years of snake crap. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> being infused. It into adds it. to a bit of the vibe. It makes you feel more comfortable to stand there. You're not standing like in a Costco on some slab cement. Yeah, it changes the feel. It just does. Um, and I, it seems silly a little bit to chalk it up to something as simple as just having carpet covering the floor to affect that. Now, granted, the people that are there are fantastic, but I, I feel like that about, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm like on this fence of like, is it just carpet? Because I do remember the first time I came to Tinley, but it's always been Tinley and there's always been the carpet. And because the, the first time I was at the show and I've said this a hundred times is that like halfway through the first show, first day, I was like, I'm always going to come back here. So whether you came five years ago or 15 years ago or whatever, it's a very well-established show. The people that have been vending it, not all of them, because there's probably people that vend it for the first time this weekend. But a lot of them are well established. And a lot of us, like, we kind of know the routine. We know what restaurant we're going to eat at tonight. We know. I didn't know any of that. <laughs> well, I just mean, like, we, we 
the space. It's familiar. Is familiar. It's yeah. Familiar. Even like the the guys that are working the door, like they they're there. Like like we're at this Airbnb, but you remember the Airbnb I liked the most. They had like the catwalk across the top and like the five bedrooms upstairs, mm-hmm. the one bedroom downstairs, mm-hmm. the big open. If we went back to that Airbnb, which unfortunately sold and is unavailable now, that would be a really cool feel. Sure. And I don't know if they have carpet, <laughs> but. But it's just because, like, oh, yeah, the memories, the gang, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So I think you, you walk into that environment even if you're not familiar with it. So there's there's a momentum of the many years mm. at that venue, right? Yes, like, that makes sense. You're starting to, like, Because you can have a gigantic brand new show somewhere, and it could be super fun with the coolest animals and great events and all the people, but... It doesn't I, have that familiarity. It's not going to have that. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what it is. And I think it's one of those things that you don't miss it until it's gone. And we haven't been there for two years. So I think people are, are unintentionally or, you know, um, subconsciously feeling very nostalgic over the course of this weekend that we just finished. So that makes a lot of sense. That does make, yeah. it, make that makes it clear in my head that that is a big part of what it was. But even like I had a great conversation with this girl last night at the auction who had never been, you know, and she just like, I don't know, dude. Yeah. Interesting. It was going around. I did like, uh, on a much shallower level, like I think the fact that I was afraid of being sick, I was like taking vitamins all weekend and I, I came with throat lozenges. I mean, you can tell my voice is gone. <clears throat> but my throat isn't bleeding like it normally is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like sucking on uh, sucking on throat lozenges and all that kind of stuff. Why don't you pour a little in that? You have a glass. Just pour a tiny in the bottom and smell it. So well, that, I like smelling it right out of the bottle. Okay. I just meant so you could open it up. But um, but anyway, don't drink it, though. I'm not going to drink it, bro. I said don't drink it. I'm not going to drink it. All right. We got the camera. You said it right here. We all heard you. I, I, I have more self-control than... Wait, wait. No, put that back up. That's my <laughs> bottle. Uh, this, is the fun, this is the fun of like life that I've done for a long time is just being able to like basically go through the motion but not drink it because I'm not doing that right now. And I've set that standard for myself, and so it's not happening. Now, this doesn't work with ice cream, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, you really want to challenge yourself. It, do it, a dry month from ice cream. With ice cream in the freezer. Because I can do a dry month from ice cream, but if it's in the freezer at the house, <laughs> it's the self-control goes out the you window. You should cut out like a bunch of ice cream advertisements and put them up all over your house and fill your freezer with ice cream and see if you can do that for a month. That's a good challenge, and so I think I think I could, but that'd be a hard one. That that would be you should do it pushing it to the level of just like extremely fun. challenging. Just, see if you can just do for it. fun, it sounds great, like a blast. Like, a <laughs> well, you know, it's fun to know your limits. It's fun to test yourself. So if that's your kryptonite, you know what I mean. Lean into it. That'd be kind of fun. I did something like that for a bit when I was um, incarcerated. Like, I you get a Snicker bar from the not concierge but I forget what they call it, the commissary and uh i got one the concierge <laughs> the concierge I, <laughs> I, I had it sitting in my little you know storage space or whatever my little i don't remember what it was just wherever i could keep my little personal items and uh just with the idea that like i'm not going to eat this snickers bar i'm gonna work out i'm gonna you know meditate i'm gonna focus on self-control and not eat the Snickers bar for this whole time. And it got to a point where it's like, you know, I'm just not eating it because if I eat it, then I'm going to feel bad. It's going to be gone. I'm like, I ate it. It's gone. And I can't do that. So I bought a second one and put it next to that one. I was like, well, if I eat that one, I have another one. So my excuse is not to not eat it because I would lose it. Cause if I do eat it, then now there's another one. I'm not going to eat either of them. <laughs> and I did it. I didn't eat either of them. Good job. <laughs> It's a big deal for me with the ice cream and the sugar. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> sugar man. Uh, I, I've never been like a sweet tooth guy at all. Yeah. I just, I mean, I eat sweet stuff or whatever. It's just not like, I don't care for, you know, it's not something I seek out. For me, good sweet stuff is like fresh raspberries. 
Something like that. Mm. You know, that's the kind of sugar. Got a little I bit want. of tart to it sometimes too. <clears throat> at least well, I do like that too. Did, so uh did I ever tell you like I guess why I don't like sweets as much? Do, have you heard the story? I think you've heard all my stories by now, but no. I don't that's not ringing a bell. I have a unusually short tongue. Cause that, I, wait, that's as far as you can stick it out? Yeah. I can't oh stick. no, I can't go that far. Oh really? Okay. I can barely go past my bottom lip. I, I bit the end of it off when I was pretty young. Like, I mean, I had teeth, obviously, but as a little kid, my parents... Like, like how much are we talking about? A, a chunk. Like a quarter inch from the front? Well, I mean, I don't front? remember, but yeah, pro- well, maybe more than that. But it was a, a big chunk, bit off. My dad said he thought it was like a slug bit me or I had a, a leech pulled off or something because he saw this thing on the floor and blood everywhere, and I was crying. And it turns out I fell, and I just, like, hit my chin on the floor. Bit, your, bit the end of your tongue bit off. Bit the tongue clean off. And so they took me to the hospital, and they're like, well, that's not going back on, you know. So they just stitched up the end of it, and that's that. That's where the sweet sensors are. <laughs> See, so I didn't know that for a long time. But when I was in, I think, like, second grade, I remember learning that or reading that in a book. They had a little diagram of which part of your tongue tastes what. And the tip, like all along the edge, is all the sweet receptors. And I was like, huh. Because I always thought it was weird that like kids loved candy. And I'm like, I don't really like candy. And even when I said, for me, sweets like raspberries or strawberries or something, you're like, or kiwi fruit, I, that's the best kind of sweet to me. And you're like, that's tart. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess so. It's, not, it's still not sweet. <laughs> but, um, I just thought it was weird until I read that, and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's why. So I don't know if there's anything to that or not, but that's what I blame it on. So there you go. A new story. Wow. Hadn't heard Didn't that know it was possible. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, okay. Um, well, being that we're at a reptile show, I have a reptile-related diving deep in the shallow end question. All right. All right. So... This is slightly off kilter from our normal ones, but I think it'll work just fine. I was wondering this. Um, let me see. How did I word this? I wrote it down. Okay, pretty pretty easy, but it says uh, neutering snakes, question mark. Good idea? Neutering snakes. Just neuter? No spay? Well, either way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Neuter spay. It, theoretically, if it was possible. I mean, would it be is there is would there be a place for that in the industry, if that was a thing that you could do? If it was as easy to fix your snake as it was your dog or cat, no. Would that be? Would that allow? Yeah, I don't know. No, idea. I don't think so. Because Why? because if you're breeding the animals, you're generally putting them together on purpose to breed. It's not like a okay. dog is gonna run across the yard and breed the other dog. Like your snake's gonna gonna go crawl over your neighbor's snake and just like. Breathing. Like, I didn't it. want that to happen. Like it's it's you have to be much more intentional with the breeding of those animals, I think. So you'd have to like we're we're trying to breed these. Sure. And neutering or spaying that'd be like uh, No, that makes no sense to me to do that whatsoever. Well the big con before I I'll I'll give you the con I see first before the pro. The big con would be if I neutered a snake and I sold it, somebody else could resell it as a non neutered snake and be deceitful about it okay but the advantage i see is this when you're making all these morphs let's try say i'm shooting for this ridiculous combo and it's a one in 32 chance and i and i get a bunch of them and i don't want to give the project out yet let's say you make the first maybe these already exist i don't know but you make a sunset uh pied clown that's you want to sell them to people but not ones that can breed just so they can see the pattern right because you get one, and then you get all these possets, and you get these other things, and you get all the stuff. But it's like you don't want to give the project out yet, but you've hatched more snakes than what you're willing to sell. Maybe this doesn't happen as much for like bull python breeders and stuff on average because smaller clutches. But with retics, a lot of times people do a breeding just to get that one snake. Yeah. And then that's the snake they need to move forward for the breeding project. So what do you do with the other 50 snakes? That are beautiful, and every I literally have snakes sit in my rack that people are begging me to buy that I won't use for breeding, but I don't want to sell. Get some dry mark on. <laughs> That's actually the solution that most people do. They, they, I mean, you wonder why all the retic breeders have these monitor lizards and things like that. You know, and they feed them off. 
I don't have a I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I value like rodents' lives as much as the reptiles' lives, yeah, and I do, do feed those. Food. Yeah, so I don't actually have a problem with like feeding reptiles to other people, uh, other people, other reptiles. <laughs> I have fed reptiles to other people at times too, but that's another story. Um, maybe that's controversial for some of our listeners or whatever, but I I have a, a little bit of a problem. It seems wasteful or out of balance to me to to intentionally produce 50 snakes to kill 49 of them like when i was a little kid and i'm like oh it would be cool to breed reptiles i that was not what i had in mind but the solution or the potential like the way that that fits into that conversation as far as the spaying and neuterings that you all the animals that you don't want to go spread the project so you just want to keep that one you just spare or neuter them and sell yep. them as non and sell them as pets wouldn't it be kind of cool if like so i would do this right for people that just wanted a pet let's say i got a bunch of cool visual morphs of whatever what if you could just throw them all in a bin and say 500 bucks, take your pick. And here's a snake that, cause when you make a new morph, right? Like I might sell that snake for $20,000, right? And then it's siblings can make some uh, empower someone else to make those $20,000 snakes, which then devalue my snakes. That's kind of how the market works. Yeah. I, I see the logic behind what but you're all saying. these other ones, like what if I could give you the $20,000 snake of tomorrow today as and you know what I mean? So that you're protecting the breeder who buys the $20,000 snakes to say you're the only one that's going to get a breedable animal. There might be other people that have these as pets, but they can't breed, reproduce. So there's no investment in it. I, I protect my investment. The other person is not making an investment in it, and but I can sell it at pet prices. Uh, yeah, I was going to say pet prices because you're not going to be something. People aren't going to want to buy this into this project that they can't breed. <laughs> No, but yeah, but but for five hundred bucks, if you could have something that you just like and it's pretty and or yeah. whatever the price range is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I <laughs> see the logic of your train of thought and thinking of getting to that point where I, you think it would be good, but I just don't. Uh, I don't know. Like, I think you said you addressed the main problem right off the bat, which is that if somebody tries to sell that snake as something that can breed and it, it can't, um, yeah, certainly that's an issue. But, okay, so, like, do you think in any realm or, like, just to go all the way back to the basics, in any realm or, or simplistic matter, do you think that reptiles are occasionally overproduced or overbred? Like, people breed them carelessly or without thinking about it. And then that certainly they, happens. They create I mean, unwanted that animals. That happens with, yeah, that absolutely happens. So what I could do is then, you know, maybe this is like me trying to play God or whatever, but, I mean, they, they do it in other industries. What I could do is give that person who wants to keep the snake, the snake, the opportunity to own and enjoy the animal throughout its life, but I am not empowering them to potentially go produce snakes of their own. Now, obviously, you would let these people know, like, you're buying a snake that's altered, right? So you're not trying to, like, hide it from them or anything. But if someone's like, ah, I just want a pet, be like, oh, cool. Here's what I recommend. Spay, neuter, done deal. If you want to come back and breed and you find out you fall in love with a species and do all this stuff, then you can come to talk to me and I can like kind of more carefully vet you and get you into the animals because so many people get into stuff. They think it's such a great idea. But those of us that have more experience in the industry, we probably had those ideas early on and figured out that they were bad ones and to save other people from making the same mistakes over and over. And again, it's always the animal that loses in the end. Loses I've, their hemipenes. Well, those <laughs> animals would lose. Yeah. Right in the beginning. But, um, no, I mean, it, it would just help reduce the number of unwanted animals from kind of like those quote unquote backyard breeders and a hobbyist breeder, I think is great. If you're trying to promote and, and, you know, uh, support your hobby and your industry and do it in a way that, that embetters the animal's lives and people's lives and stuff like that. That's great. But if you're like, I don't know, maybe I'll just try to breed my snakes. It'll be cool. I saw some price tags on some stuff. Maybe I could make that money. I, I feel like that's not enough motivation or maybe you haven't 
put in the thought or energy or time to even think about what you're trying to produce. I'm just wondering how successful it would be is actually like how many people out there that want to buy a snake that has been neutered or spayed. I, I, I think the reason I thought of this is because several people asked me, is okay. there a way to do that? Okay. I would take that. Hmm. I would love to have one of those snakes. Okay. Just because, but if they're not wanting to ever breed it, just to, the, again, it goes back to what I said originally, which is that it's not going to reproduce if they don't intentionally breed it because it's not going to run across the street. I don't trust them. Yeah. Oh, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. You know? Sure. Okay. So just keep, it's not that I think that they lie. I think that they go into something with one intention, then it changes later or they're like, Oh, I had to get rid of the snake because I got married or divorced or I moved or whatever. And then they sell it to someone else and uh, that person's breeding it. Well, you know, I'm at a spot too where uh, like, I'm not planning to reproduce anymore, but there's no snip happening. It's just not. <laughs> so my own personal emotions on the th- thought are no. Yeah. But you're pretty much in control of where you spread your seed. Yeah. And if I, these I snakes are my seed and I'm putting them into other people's hands, then they're in control of it. That's a different story. Sure. So, so a lot of dog breeders do this. You can buy these like really cool top end dog breeds. And like the new mutt things, like the Labradoodles, those guys aren't far along enough to, to get into this. But a lot of the older, more established breeds that people take very seriously, they have show quality dogs and they make sure that the confirmation is all good and everything like that. And if they're slightly less, they snip them and they sell them. And those are the pet quality animals. And they're far cheaper. They're going to have the same bloodline, so probably make an amazing pet or work dog or whatever but they're saying i don't want to promote those genetics in the industry from spreading i want to keep my breed standard very high you know so that's another reason why they'll new to them but those pet quality animals are great the thing is you know with like within the dog world, you get these backyard breeders that they just get this dog and they see what a show champion version of that breed is worth and they think that they can make some money. So, okay. I see. Yeah. I, I'm completely with the logic behind it. Um, I initially pushed back against it because oh. uh, my own emotional ideas of being spared or neutered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, a little empathy there. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I, I understand. Well, how come you're not getting clipped there, Neuter? What's the, I mean. I don't want to. <laughs> All right, yeah. So. I don't have any other real reason other than that. Yeah. I mean, if you can convince me why I would make a decision to and want to instead of no, not. I, no, I don't know. I just, I didn't know if you had a specific reason or what. Because like some people are like, oh, I'm afraid of the surgery. Or some people are like. Mm-hmm. Maybe something will happen in life where I, again, do want to have children. Like, what if I get divorced and have a new wife and want to have kids again? Or me and my current wife decide we want to have kids again. People want to keep that their options open. I do like to keep options open. I wouldn't say that's the main reason. The, the, the real main reason is that I don't want to, especially some, just if somebody else wants me to. Like, that's not enough reason for me. I have to want to. Mm, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Sim- it really is as simple as that. And going back to that, I, I am the master of modern reality. I don't want to. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think most guys I talk to about that are like, uh-uh, you ain't touching me down there. You know what I mean? Like self-preservation. Ah, I like people to touch me down there every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have no sense of self-preservation. Like. <laughs> We're we're joking around like I've got four kids. I'm I'm done having kids. You know now I have a buddy that had three kids and they're amazing and everything with his wife. And they had him early on and he ended up getting divorced and they married a, another gal and she just really wanted to have kids and he's like sorry and she's like but you can get that reversed and all that and it's like first of all it's super expensive likelihood of it even working is pretty low you know what I mean so it just didn't work out I've I've seen that kind of drama where he. Thought he was done and then changed his mind. Like he would have had kids for her, but it was like just not worth it. And I I think that ended up being a big thing for her, his new wife. You know, he loved her and everything. She loved him and everything. I've heard of these same situations. Yeah. So anyway, I used to joke around with these guys when I worked at the steel mill. I think the, the thing was somebody had gotten their hand crushed in some machinery and they, they got a huge payoff 
I don't remember what the number was, but let's say for the sake of argument, they got two hundred thousand dollars because they got their hand crushed. You know what I mean? And so my one doesn't but, seem like enough. <laughs> well, okay, this is where the conversation went. So my one buddy always jokes around about being so poor all the time. And he's pretty poor, but it was mostly a running joke for us. But he was like, oh, man, I got to pay my rent this month. What can I afford to lose? <laughs> he's like, I, he was like, listen, I'm going to give the crane guy 10% to drop this big metal slab on my what? My foot, my toe, my hand. He's like, I could probably lose a couple off on my left hand. And he's looking at his hands. He's like, oh, not that finger, though. That's my wife's favorite finger. (laughs) (laughs) He's trying to figure out what body part. So the, the, the job that we had was like it was it was intensive, but you you could talk all day like you didn't have to engage your brain in that way, you know. So we would just have ridiculous conversations. There is some story about like if you had to pick like which finger like for a certain amount of money or something, what like which finger would you cut off? What that's something that I've heard before. And I, don't I don't know. know. Maybe it was in a movie or something. I don't know. But that was kind of like it. So we're like, all right, all right. How about your nose? That's on your face. So we just started putting prices <laughs> to body parts, and mine were really low. <laughs> Everyone classic, else was classic like, "Classic dude stuff, man." Cut, yep, yep, yep. Just like you said, like two hundred thousand dollars for a hand. That seems pretty low. I'm like, I don't know, two hundred thousand dollars for my left hand. Like, it doesn't work that well That's anyway. Fretting hand, bro. I mean, yeah, I don't need to play the guitar for for two hundred thousand dollars. Like, now. I'm a little older. Two thousand, two hundred thousand does not go nearly as far as it was when I was young. Yeah. But then we started talking. Obviously, you're going to this, that, and the other. And I'm like, okay, how about lefty? <laughs> how much is lefty worth? And everyone's like, nope, that's it. You crossed the line. That's sacred. You can't do that. And I'm like, I don't know. I got my kids. Like, I, I'd be probably fine with it. Like. 100 bucks <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what i mean like dude. hey man that's 100 bucks you know oh like i ain't gonna use that ball for the rest of my life like what do i need <laughs> everyone's like oh you can look all weird and i was like all right how about 100 bucks plus a prosthetic one <laughs> you know what i mean just throw something in there to even it out yeah i'm like for his i don't know how to explain you right now <laughs> What's your number? I, I'm expensive. Bro. You're not using. I am anyway. expensive. How, how expensive is expensive? Very expensive. Okay, unreasonably. So if, expensive. so if I gave you a million dollars to to cut off one of your nuts, like surgically, it's not going to hurt or anything. You know what I mean? We're going to go get it done, and it's a million dollars. You're telling me you wouldn't do that? I don't think so. I would probably cut off my head for a million dollars. Your head? <laughs> What are I mean, you going to do with the million? No, it wouldn't be me, head. but my, most like my, my wife and kids would be like, woo No, yeah, I'm sure they'd be stoked about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Dad's dead. If my job is to take care of them, I'm done one fell swoop. It's not, this is where, yeah, no. Your job is not to take care of them monetarily, and you know better than that. You're being a smart ass right now. <laughs> I'm just saying a million dollars for your nut. You wouldn't do that? No. A million I would, dollars? I wouldn't. Did you know that if you invest that at like 5%, it's $50,000 oh a year dude. for 20 years? I'm not. The rest uh, of your life. I'm not on that, I'm not on that train, dude. I've, I've let go of it a long time ago. It's, money, <laughs> money, is not, money is not the end-all, be-all. Of, You're of not money. fun. I, I want to know. No, I'll place. have all kinds of other fun, but I'm not ge- accepting. Cutting your nut off. No, not for, no, not for money. There are very few parts of my body I wouldn't cut out for a million dollars. I'd gouge my eyes out for a million bucks. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, probably wouldn't. I mean, it's not its not that I care so much about a million dollars. It's just I don't care about my eyes very much. I, I really <laughs> am having a hard time taking you seriously on this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I don't know. They have so many cool things these days, like... I don't know, really good They have so many eyes. cool things these days. And you know, one of the things that's really cool about a lot of things they have these days is looking at them and seeing how cool they are. Some things are soft. You can feel them. They feel good. I'd, I would drape my life, cover my life in silk. You can get that for so much less than a million dollars. <laughs> this was, I mean, you're not crazy. This was always the ultimate 
you know, ending of the conversation at the mill too. Everyone going, what? <laughs> what? I know, I know. You're, like, talk, you're like talking sauce. We, we have a phrase for this in the family, and it's that you're talking sauce. <laughs> <laughs> well, push came to shove. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Test me in this. Someone come give me a million bucks. Yeah, no, I think that at some point you'd probably like have a conversation with somebody about it before you did it, and then it would be somebody like me or you know Ashley, and then it would be like they would no, try to talk you out of is, it. No, I wouldn't try to talk you out of it. It wouldn't be a try thing. It'd be like. I'm going to tell you why this isn't happening. <laughs> well, so I'm to the point where, like, like if you wanted to give me a million dollars, let's say, to cut off one of my legs, I'm like, for a million dollars, I'd let you take it with a hacksaw. <laughs> you know, oh, like, they have so many cool prostheses and stuff like that. I could probably run faster and jump higher after it was done. We are not alike. <laughs> I want to hear other people's thoughts on this. If you're listening to this podcast, if you're listening on uh, like audio stuff, then go on the Searchable Reptiles Facebook group and tell me your price for your body parts. <laughs> List some body parts and prices there. If you're on the YouTube thing, you can just comment below. But uh, I would assume most people would probably be somewhere between your position and mine. Because you're like, no, nothing for no price, never. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, take whatever the hell you want. Throw, <laughs> throw some money at me. <laughs> Get buy me dinner. <laughs> buy me dinner. Gouge my eye out with a spoon. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I mean, the truth of the matter is I've been doing it to myself all along for free. <laughs> Why not let somebody else play? <laughs> wow. Dude. Uh, yeah, see, I don't, I don't know. I want to talk about... Dude, it's been... Building up inside of me for weeks and I can't contain myself. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm super stoked. Like I, I re- was really excited to tell you that that I've given my life to Jesus. That is exciting. I was super excited to tell you of like of, of some of the people that I really wanted. Were you sad that everyone else hugged you and I didn't? No. Oh. I no. just figured I already gave you a couple good hugs. No, no, I wasn't sad about that at all. Mm-hmm. Um it's just because you had a a pretty large role in it, you know. There was a, there's a good amount of that because you because you've been the shining example of what I think a, a Christian is, you know. And there's always all these people that made it very unpalatable for me. I'm probably one of the last people. Hillary was Hillary was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> she's, I was gonna ask you what she thought about it. Yeah, she she's a she laughed at me at first, you know, kind of like like just like Abraham's wife laughed at him. It was like, <laughs> "Yeah, right. <laughs> We're gonna have kids." <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was very much like that but it's it's just been something that's come for such a long time and uh you know all of my holdbacks were because of what men have done you know to give christianity a bad name in, okay. in whatever light that that is that was one of my biggest holdbacks you know um but it was just a path i've been headed down for a long time and I've always been very spiritual. There's never been a time in life when I Oh, was. for sure. And we we've talked about it on this podcast probably almost every episode yeah. some aspect of spirituality. Yeah. And it's just a uh, it just clicked and it, it really was this amazing feeling of of peace um overwhelming feeling of peace. Like and for somebody who's been fairly peaceful for most of my life to have that much more peace Again, it's been overwhelming and just great. And uh, I also do attribute it to the reason I had so many great connections with people. Is just that, that I do have this feeling of peace. I'm able to just connect with people without any kind of anxiety or any of that. It, it, I felt it all weekend, like getting to see all these people that I, a lot of them I had never seen before. A lot of them I'd seen many times before. I know what you mean. I, I think probably a lot of people think that it's crazy, but I think people think, don't think you're crazy or I'm crazy. So for us to say it, maybe they'll think about it before defaulting to that. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, The Bible talks about it kind of like a a joy that transcends understanding. Like you can understand joy, happiness, peace, all this kind of stuff. But there's a, yeah, there's a certain point in your life where you you just, you and I were talking about it. It's kind of like that. Oh, it's so hard to describe. But like, 
wherever your your kind of place is like for me i like to go out in the woods i like to sit down i just try to clear my mind a little bit and i love listening to the wind through the trees and the birds and doing that just kind of soaking all that stuff in and then reminding myself of the perspective that i'm i'm part of something that's much bigger than me and i'm really an insignificant part there's this weird cool thing that works together when you realize you know I'm probably not as important as I think I am but for some reason God loves me anyway that's very humbling and and it gives you a perspective where you're like you don't have to take yourself very seriously and at the same time you know there must be some important reason for you to be here today yeah it's kind of cool I I, uh, yeah I don't know it's great and I like reconnecting with that. But what what is it about, you know, Christianity or what people are doing about it that you find unpalatable or have found? It's just when when people get force when people get very judgmental or or forceful or you know, a little extra pushy um about wanting you to believe what they believe, you know, that I've never really liked that. Like, I'm going to believe what I believe. I don't want you to force your beliefs upon me. I'm telling you, man, a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one of your pinkies. And, th- th- but I've always known that that's not what Christianity is about. You know, I've, I've known about it for a long time. You know, it's not like I'm just living in the jungle somewhere. It was like all of a sudden I've known about this. I don't even call it religion. Per se, it's it's something beyond that. Like men have dubbed it as religion. It's that's why I say it's a relationship. Yeah, it's a relationship with God, the God of the universe. You know what I mean? Who created all of that stuff? And that's where I think it gets screwed up. Is that you? You'd get this like corporate institution that has an agenda. Yeah, you know what I mean. That is is distasteful because it's it's even hypocritical to its own. <laughs> Mission, yes, you know what I mean, of yes. sharing love in the world, yes, yeah, and so. that and that was always what it was. And then I, over the, these different conversations I had, like I mentioned before, the one with my neighbor that came and um, we just had these conversations, just well up, and she's had this light, you know, within her that I that I recognized and just brought me to, that brought me to tears, you know, just yeah. without trying. It's just like, yeah, it's a long time coming and. I'm super stoked, dude. Like, like, un- <laughs> like, unbelievably stoked, and it feels like a, a fresh, new breath of life. Um, that's, that's. I'll tell you what's crazy about that is I think that uh, that you're a pretty influential guy, and you've done a lot of cool things in life and stuff like that. But if it's all, you know, you just trying to understand and do things, if you can accomplish that much like that, I think if you can unlock, because that's mental and physical and you know what I mean those sides of you if you can kind of like unlock that same balance that you have in those areas and drive into the spiritual side of you watch out world you know what I mean I think so that's it'll be an exciting time so that's cool yeah we'll have to talk about that more as you like sort of get into it but yeah I don't think it's like a crazy buy into this secret club and wear your special underwear and pay your taxes Mm -mm. It's it's about, you know, it's about the fact that you're we're supposed to have had this relationship with God and and be connected with his whole creation all along and somewhere along the line we kinda of forget that stuff, you know? Yeah. And we lose it. So reconnecting that, you know, is is what it's all about. That's what that word means, reconciliation. It's like Bringing it back to the way it was supposed to be. You realize everything's broken. And if you can, you know, reconnect that stuff. Yeah. That's cool. And, it, and it's certainly, the great feeling about it too is that it doesn't feel like this like, all of a sudden I'm like, you know, I didn't change much. But there was a certainly, like there was a feeling that changed inside. Yeah. Very, very much. In a strong... I, I think I already kind of explained it, just like an overwhelming feeling of peace, like, you know, yeah. um, but not to where I'm like, oh, I've all of a sudden found the answer. If anything, it's more like, wow, I've got so much more to learn. <laughs> wow, so, I have so much many more. questions. So many questions, <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
So many, many, well, many and, questions. Well, and that, that is a good opportunity to learn because if you thought you had it all figured out, you're pretty stagnant. Mm. Right. So if you have so it's many like, questions like all of a sudden, of yeah, it's like the opposite. It's like all of a sudden, all these que- and yeah. the questions that I've had for a long time that I just all of a sudden even more burning desire to like figure out so yeah. much more about life and the universe and the world. And I think you'll find it because you you know when you're looking at all these things that you've looked at through your whole life that you haven't been able to figure out, you're always looking at them from the same point of view. And it and if you have a new perspective on everything. You know, because it's like, I don't know, it, it to me, it's a really big difference. Some of the major things, like if you think, hey, you know what, there's this intentional loving being that's actually in control of stuff, not like we're all just floating randomly. You know what I mean? And and that guy cares about me. That's a huge, di- that will change the way you live your life. It's not like overnight, like, look at me, I'm perfect now. It's nothing at all like that. It's just like, I can... I can look at my problem from the other side. You know what I mean? I can see it from, you know, all angles instead of instead of the same way I've looked at it the rest of my life. And that's when stuff starts to click and fall into place. And, and that happens for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? It's just, but it's kind of cool. And, and I'll, yeah, for me, I've been a Christian for a long time, but <clears throat> I forget it. I get disconnected from that. And it, you know what I mean? Just because I get weighed down. You've seen this in me all the time. Like you just said it right now. Like, yeah, your perspective is wrong. You're talking sauce. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your family doesn't want you for money. <laughs> Cut your head off for a million dollars, you idiot. <laughs> um, but no, you get, I mean, in reality, we're just joking around, but in, in um, reality, you, you do get distracted by things and you forget stuff. So. But for me, that's what, um, that's why I go back to church and I realize there are a lot of judgmental people with institutionalized ideas, but not all of them. And there's a lot of people that are there to intentionally, you know, kind of connect with other people spiritually and lift each other up and share life's, you know, struggles together and. Which is what, that's what friends do. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why we like friends, because we're connecting with them in the way that we were originally tended to. You know, wouldn't it be cool if you could connect with everyone that way, even if they're your enemies or, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so that's where I think Christianity is very attractive. And that is probably what you're referring to me, because there's a lot of things that I do very wrong. But I, I can kind of connect and pull good out of every situation, because... You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, you know, we're honored to live in this life and be given the people that we're given in in life to interact with and and the influences that we have. I mean, I'm sure when you go to a reptile show, you're an icon in the industry. So people come up to you and they tell you how you've influenced their lives and stuff. And it's like, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy, you know. There's been, there have been some overwhelming ones this, this weekend. Like, yeah, some of the things that people have told me have. You know, just have me welling, you know, heart and eyes. We were just doing it on the porch before we did this podcast with my crew out there talking about it, you and me and everything like that. And yeah, so I don't know. It's kind of a kind of an honor to do that, but a tough thing to do. I it, it's actually it's a lot like I found it very easy this weekend. Oh, it's it. There's it's. I don't think it's easy. I think it's good. Maybe this weekend was easy. That that can be fine, but it's not always easy. But sometimes it's good. That's why they say you're like fighting the good fight, you know? But um, like I see that part kind of like vending this show. I've always been very clear about like I, I hate re- vending reptile shows. <laughs> you know, I don't like mostly what it puts my animals through and stuff like that. But it was mm. just like a lot of work. Oh yeah. yeah. And I, I'm tied to a booth. I'm giving of myself. I'm trying to share information, allow people to have an experience with an animal in person that they have they can only otherwise get through, say YouTube or whatever. Um and share any experience or knowledge that I have or passion for a certain animal with people. But that's draining. It's exhausting. It's good. And I'm always happy, like here we are on Sunday night after a show, you know, and I don't know what time it is, what day it is, or whatever, and you guys are listening, but 
So the Sunday night after a reptile show, you're wiped out. My voice is gone. It hurts. And here I am podcasting for people too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Through that. But um, yeah, it's good. It It's good. And every time I do a reptile show, I'm like, ah, oh, it's worth it. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> you know? uh, I'm definitely doing it a little less. Like when I packed out, it was with a rolly hockey bag and backpack, you know. Whoa, so it was a little only two bags. Yeah. Not seven. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I managed to scale it down, especially this new camera helps because since it shoots in 4K and I can crop in instead of bringing the mult. First, I was thinking I got to bring the camera to Triple B. I got to bring this camera to vlog. I was like, no, I'll just film it in 4K and I'll just, I can zoom in and do multiple cuts from one camera. Mm. And so I'll just put that in the bag and then, you know, bring. I had the light and whatever and I didn't have to vent too much. I was able to walk around the show quite a bit, you know. Luckily, or unfortunately, <laughs> the Coco blocks didn't show up, so I didn't have to. Even though COVID, oh, the, the blocks were supposed to come and they just didn't. Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be like a guaranteed shipment, and just they never they never showed. What? Yeah. So Where are they? In a truck somewhere. In oh Illinois. my god! I didn't know that. I just thought they like were like, oh, we don't have any blocks. Oh, I no, didn't they know were they... blocks. They were supposed to arrive. And wow. Yes. Yeah, so that See, was... that's one of the things that would distract me. <laughs> <laughs> I was bummed. Well, I, I felt worse for Colby because Colby was going to, you know, mostly, mostly handle that. So I, it wouldn't have detracted me too much, you know, but there was, I still definitely would have helped out with the, you know, yeah. people coming by or carrying it away. So it gave me a little bit more freedom to yeah. focus on doing the uh, interviews and then have, taking time to talk to people and walk around, which is basically all I did. Mm. Uh, connected with people and did interviews and filmed a vlog at the very end and i had fun with that you know it's funny like interview style videos i don't know if you have the same experience with social media content but interviews are my favorite things to film and be a part of and then we share it the, they they are the like least performing videos as <laughs> yeah. far as like nobody watches it yes the people who do watch it really love it yes and they're there for that content they want to learn from people mm -hmm. who know what they're talking about but it's less entertaining, I think, than saying, my snake is pooping in the grass. My snake is pooping in the grass. You know, or whatever <laughs> stupid stuff we normally do. I love that video. I still get <laughs> I still get comments. Like One of the most common comments on that video is, uh, what am I watching? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you're here, buddy. Oh, man. What did I just watch? So I had some great interviews because... It was kind of on accident because I stopped doing interviews for that reason a long time ago because I was like, I guess I'm the only one that cares about these. But um, I wanted to do this little segment or like a series, I suppose, you know, that we would revisit every now and then called Super Doors versus the World. And I came up with a little rating system. Yeah, I, I that, was one of the well, I, guests. I, well, I know, but nobody else. Knows. I haven't talked about it anywhere before. So, yeah, yeah. So... It would be really good. I didn't interview you. That was all Thomas and you, which I appreciate you doing that because Thomas was like, I'm out of my comfort zone here. And I was like, well, go interview Brian. <laughs> It'll be fine. And he's like, okay, I think I could do Dave. <laughs> all right, go interview Dave. But um, but yeah, so it's just a little rating system, and it's it's packed around being fun, and you picked a species. What species did you even do, uh, by the blood way? Blood python. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. So you picked a, a species, blood python versus super dwarf. You know what I mean, and uh, and we'll finish it all in editing and stuff. But just a quick interview. You're talking about what you like and why about a certain species, and I got to interview uh, Jay and Juliet Brewer, who came to the show today. That was cool too. I haven't seen Jay. At a it show. was a surprise. They decided like Friday night that they were gonna come. They well, bought yeah, a ticket I was. I was there. Like I said, I was there um, <laughs> last weekend visiting family in Long Beach. I went to go see Jay and do a little thing with Juliet, and um, it was cool. And he was telling me he was like, "I'm thinking about going." He's like, "He's like," I was like, "That'd be awesome." I never really seen you there before. He's like, "No, we were there before one time." I was like, "No, we weren't." <laughs> no, he, he did come. He not when I was there. Oh, okay. It was before I ever came to a Tin Lee. That one there. time that I was talking where I had the tiny booth. Yeah, I remember he came that time. Mm. But um But yeah, he he But I know, I don't get to see those guys very much. Right. And and uh really they were such a I mean, a lot of people don't realize this, but even before I ever worked at Prehistoric Pets, I was friends with Jay. He was at my wedding. 
you know what I mean, with the girls and everything like that. So Juliet was like, she, you know, she even said it in the interview. I always feel this way about her, but she's like, ah, I feel like you're my big brother that I never had, you know? And I was like, nah, I feel like you're my little sister, even though I already have some of those. <laughs> <clears throat> but, uh, Oh, it was just great. I think I gave her like a hundred hugs this weekend, you know what I mean? Because I just missed her and had a great talk with Jay and it was really fun. So he talked about Mainland Retics, which of course, like DJ Brewer with Mainland Retics and Juliet talked about alligators. And so that was, that was just super fun. And we were like, oh, I don't know. I, I just got to do a couple of interviews. I did one with um, Megan Kelly too about mm-hmm. green anacondas and just sitting down and geeking out with people. The, the cool thing about the interviews is it's people talking about animals they love. So you just, I mean, you know me. I geek out about my stuff all the time. So to just sit with somebody while they're doing that, and I don't talk about the superdoors in the interview, that's going to be different. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, well, it's just I'm going to do a baseline video, and then we'll just compare other people's to it. So you'll have to see the series. When it yeah, yeah. I'm going to just see what the end result is for sure. Yeah, I, I have a thing in my mind. Maybe it won't work at all. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and then there'll be one more piece of content you record for us that we never use. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm actually really excited about it. I think Thomas is excited, too, because I don't know that he – fully grasp the concept until after he did a bunch of them but yeah all all i'm saying is i got to do some interviews and it was really fun to see my old friends and and talk about that stuff so and and then every one of them that i talked to like you turn the camera down and it's like so how's life been and what's going on and some of them shared some like you know difficult things they're going through and it's just cool that make you make a dumb YouTube video, but and I'm glad to see that it does have an impact on people and people enjoy the content that we work hard on. But it impacts me because it puts me there, and it's it's this podcast. Like, why are we? Do, why do we do this podcast? Because one night after a Tinley, we're sitting in the kitchen having this great conversation. And I was sitting there, and I was listening to some of the things you were saying, and the, the the things that were happening. I was like, "This is good stuff that would be very beneficial for a lot of people to hear." I think, and it, it would put to put some perspective on life uh, out of something as seemingly simple as a reptile show and meeting up with a friend there. And I was like, "That needs to be recorded." And I had the same thing last night when I was sitting with Zach, like, and he was explaining his woes to me you know and just like going over stuff and i was there was, i had that same exact feeling sitting in a house that was very much a cookie cutter of the very first house we were at it, right um in, at the tilly airbnb and listening to him you know just be very truthful with what he was feeling what he was going through and i, and I told him after you know at some point i was like you know while i was listening to you say that i was like thinking like we this have a platform for some, this. Yeah, we have a platform for this. You yeah, should you probably wanna, come. You talk about real stuff. Yeah, real stuff. And it was just like, just, <clears throat> I could just see other people listening to that and what he was saying, you know, on a wider audience, even though it's just meant to be in, in a room of just two people talking and how very helpful it could be for other people to hear, like, I've been through that or I'm going through that and I, th- hearing that somebody else is having something exactly like I've had, um, and things that I've thought about and have struggled with and never gotten to talk with anybody about, like that somebody else feels that way and they're going through it and they know how I feel without even knowing me. Well, this is one more area where we're different. That's very altruistic of you. I was going to say my reason for doing this podcast is because it's a cheap excuse to get to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it's, that's what it started. At. Yeah. So that, that conversation, <laughs> like, I mean, we that, should get together more often. That's How about once a month. That's part of it too. That's part of it too. I mean, it was a good reason. It was a good excuse for, for that as well. It's like, I want to continue to have these conversations yeah. and make sure that they continue to happen. But that was for me, not for other people. <laughs> I mean, you guys can watch. Thank you for watching. Good job, James. Thanks for the whiskey. People yeah. are going to pay me to go somewhere and give me a drink, and I get to hang out with you. Hey, that works. The crazy ideas that we think of that work. Why would anyone do that? Why are you listening? I'm pretty sure I've asked this question almost every episode. Why are you listening to this right now? 
comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> good God. Oh, that's funny. Oh man. Yeah, it is good, dude. I it's it's great. I, I love it. I've there you know, there was a there was a moment. There was a moment where I was struggling with it when like a lot of our podcasts weren't getting to that point that I'd wanted to start them in the first place and like it just seemed like you'd start seemed- selling super dwarves and whatever. <laughs> and it's, it's like and, I'm, and then the fact that I'm, you know, I put effort, uh, get the mics, get it set up, you know, put it, I put work into starts it. Starts to feel like work. Even just setting up this room so we could fit the chairs here and sit and. Yeah, this is my bedroom, but, by the way. You're, you're, the camera is sitting on the bed. Yeah, which was moved and rearranged. <laughs> which is why we had to do it tonight because I can't sleep anywhere <laughs> until this podcast is done. Um, so, yeah, all of, all of that, but it, it, it went away, I think, um. Well, I, th- I think we started trying to promote it and push it as a thing, and then, and then we're like, oh, that's not why we do it." So we just quit, and it got better. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know, we it, it just we just had to kind of feel out what we were doing. But yeah, that's good times. It so is. I want to know what, uh, what, yeah, Hillary was like, ha, 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 you did what? And then, and then what? Well, just cause she's always known me as like, like I've always been, and sometimes I'll, outwardly, like you, like I told you earlier, like you were telling me earlier, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm more Christian than all these Christians, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> even though I'm, technically I guess I wasn't, um, <laughs> Just as far as the value thing, and uh, she's uh, I've always been outspoken about I, I don't like organized religion. I yeah. don't like what it has done in many instances, and in, in almost, I'm not going to say all, certainly not going to say all, but in a lot of the examples <coughs> I've seen, I've focused on the negative aspects of what it, organized religions have done and yeah. can do. And um, so she's known that about me for a long time. You know, that's one thing she kind of sees, and yeah. she's like... What, what, what I thought you didn't like organized religion, but that's not what it is. It's not organized religion. That's not what it is. <laughs> that's your caveat. <laughs> it's not. I'm so unorganized about this. You don't even know. <laughs> um, what, what was her ultimate thing? Like, cool. You no, do was, you? Yeah, or? Yes. And she's even yeah. like, she wants to come. She said she'll come check out church with me. I'm just to I, see what it's all. Yeah, I'm reading all some of about. The, the stories to the kids. No, the kids have come with me before. Yeah, um, and then and Noah wanted to come back and check it out. Eli said, "I think I told you." That Eli said, the, the one, "I'm never coming back here." Uh. <laughs> See, it was it was hilarious. <laughs> Eli takes after you. I'll give you a million dollars. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. Um. I actually talked with her a few days ago when we were sitting at the park and how much I would like for her to you know l- listen to more i i gave basically offered up the gospel to her you know now that i learned exactly what that was <laughs> mm-hmm. there you go <laughs> and uh talked about that and you know read some of the the verses that are combined you know the, the four main parts of the gospel you know we, mm-hmm. god and, then the and obviously you did that because you get brownie points at the church through their mm-hmm. organized religious system and right you no. get to go yeah. to level two right totally you that's exactly, save your that wife 100 percent my motivation yes i'm yeah. trying to level up <laughs> I'm trying to get my brown belt. <laughs> yeah, no, just because of the the again overwhelming love and peace that uh, yeah, you you want people that you care about to experience that. Yes, yeah, and some people are just not charismatic in sharing information. There, well, we we're talking about Blake talking about the rebrand and stumbling over his words and stuff. I think I think sometimes the uh, pushy. Christians or whatever are just trying to do that. You know what I mean? Like maybe I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt or whatever, but it, it seems like people usually shy away from socially awkward circumstances and stuff like that. So I think they're like, no, but I care about you so much that I'm going to do this awkwardly, but I got to say it, you know, I think that it's that, you know, when they do that. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's like, listen, I think you're such a sinner and I just had to tell you. <laughs> no, I think it's like I just have this peace and I, I relate I actually relate to you where you're at and I want you to have that. It's cool. And I, I don't know, I think that's where it's at. But Yeah, me too. But anyway, 
cool, man. Well, that, yeah. I don't know. You ready to go to sleep? Why? Well, hour and a half ago. My brain stopped. <laughs> it did. It was. Uh, it's fun to watch. I don't see that happen too much, at least especially sitting in the chairs with the mic. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's I got cool. nothing. Ask me something. I'll say this: our last podcast. If if you did not go listen to the last one, which was with C and B, it was the ring, the Lord of the Rings one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you had Gollum on and the ring on the thumbnail if it was on YouTube. But um, that one was crazy. We we got into it. I, yeah, yeah, that was definitely a good one. You, you were falling. You were you were being pulled into unconsciousness unwillingly. <laughs> kind of. I don't know why, why it's hilarious for me to watch. But <laughs> oh, I am right now. Yes. I'm falling asleep <laughs> with the <laughs> mic. Big yawns. <sighs> oh, man, I can't a, make it anymore. It's a long weekend. But the the cool thing is, check out of the Airbnb is not till noon and. We just had to drive home and put away snakes after that, so yeah, not not so bad. Well, you know, dude, we are we traditionally do this podcast about roughly an hour and twenty minutes. We're at about an hour and fifteen, so oh, I made it. <laughs> you you kind of <laughs> made it. Uh, I don't know exactly how to sign off tonight. Um, we've started in very we very much just sat down and it's like it didn't even really hit record. We just kind of started talking about whatever which is what a podcast i think is yeah you know that's, that's what our podcast is <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> but that's true there's all kinds of different podcasts there are these podcasts that have like these music segments and there's like all these different segments and like there's these you know intro music to se- segments and <laughs> <laughs> i just don't i don't really listen to those type of podcasts too much <laughs> well i'll sign off like this Brian loves it when you come up to him randomly at a reptile show or some event and talk about deep stuff with him. So get your conversations prepared in advance. Tell him the impact that he's had on your life. Hey, you can do this to me too. This sounds kind of nice actually if I've ever had an impact on somebody. And uh, besides my friend Brian here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, I mean, you can you can fangirl over the reptile celebrity of your choice or whatever. There's a lot of good ones to choose from. But if you come up to me or Brian, let us know what kind of impact you had on your life. Tell us something cool or deep. Share a struggle with us or something like that. Let's pray for you or talk you through it or whatever because those are the kind of conversations we like. Yeah. Please do. Good night. Searchable as a reptile.